part of the game any time he's got on the ball but I suppose the question is where do you play him when he's full forward the ball is not going in then he's out in the wing the goal threat is gone so um, it's hard for him to be everywhere but he is looking very sharp well if they lose this game this has got to be a major disappointment for Galway I mean they came into this weekend being seen by many people as maybe the third best team in the country absolutely we'll see you go for this again now with the top spin on it no 1-6 instead for Joe Canning out of that tally of 1-11 and Galway have now brought on Aidan Hart on and David Burke goes off so both midfield players have been replaced by Galway bit of a nightmare for John McIntyre this afternoon on the line for Galway trying to make the changes trying to plot a victory it's a big ask 8 points down, 10 minutes to go place in the semi-final against Kilkenny people might say it's a reward and some people might say it's I'm not sure reward is the word you want to use when you've got to face Kilkenny but it's there to be won comes back out here well towards Fergal Moore and Fergal Moore went down challenged and fouled there by Malumphy free out to Galway well they've got to speed it up a little bit now David Collins his colleagues they need a goal or two towards Cyril Donnellan cut out at the pass however back in there again went to Damien Hayes hasn't scored so far today Damien Hayes Kevin Moran playing in the back line sometimes midfielders got three points huge one down runs on beyond everybody Shane Cavett it's like as if Galway have extra players at the back now and Waterford are retreating somewhat to try and hold on to their lead Ger Farraher crisply forward that'll be cut out strongly challenged there was the fullback Liam Lawler has support there from David O'Sullivan. He's played well, O'Sullivan. Tony Brown, Mr. Consistency. Back here as far as the cornerback, Noel Collins. Shane O'Sullivan now making the passes count. Shaving seconds off the clock. Down to John Milan. Two points so far to his credit. Under hits this one. And it's straight back out again to Kevin Hines. One of the five Galway subs. Running on beyond Damien Hayes, going across to try and get there is Michael Brick Walsh. Great play again by Michael Brick Walsh, trying to get it away. A couple of Galway players, in particular Damien Hayes, and still he has it. Should have lost it there a couple of times. From Brown it comes back out. O'Sullivan playing it down here. John Milan jinking this way, turning the other way, and hitting it. And hitting it wide. The crowd behind the goal, the Waterford fans were almost gulping in breath to try and well, it would have been direct it in. Brick Walsh, I don't know how he got away with that ball across the field and John Milan with a great catch then and uh, you know they've had so many chances really. Waterford they could they could be another ten points up in this game, they've completely dominated in all the key positions. Waterford about to make a change very shortly, but right now it's Damien Hayes. Throwing that ball back in there towards Cyril Donlan. Donlan taking off, they need a goal. Still going, still going. Stopped in his tracks, couldn't get enough latitude. Out came Liam Lawler. Oh, he's playing around with it there. They need to get it out of danger quickly. About to be challenged. Good play. Way down. Collected here again. Smartly forward as far as Barry Daly. And Barry Daly hits it over the bar. Everything counts at this stage. Shane Casey is about to come on and the player who's going to come off will be number 22 Seamus Prendergast yeah in fairness to Barry Daly nice point and he's, he's got on the ball quite a bit since he came on uh, even though he's marking Kevin Moore and, uh, Barry Daly has looked sharp had a great season of course with uh, Claren Bridge 20 is on as well for Waterford and that's Richie Foley didn't do a great deal in the Munster final, lost his place. He'll have been greatly disappointed. He's coming on now for Owen Kelly. Just over five minutes to go. Daisha fans who probably didn't even travel here because they didn't expect very much. Watching this at home must be saying, wow, some performance, some transformation. And with Malumphy there, just to season the performance with another point. Great score. Yeah, he's had a big game as well, Jar worked very, very hard from the off and you know, he needs to be scoring more generally, but he scored two good points today and uh, his work rate's been excellent. This comes back out to Joe Canning. Angling this one across towards here, Latanian 
takes it down with difficulty. Liam Lawler holding off from him, not committing himself, again getting in the block, did well. Good play by Liam Lawler. Back out to Porek Mahoney. Smashing clearance, what a catch by Shane Welsh. Little hand pass released here to Malumphy. And Malumphy striking it over the bar. Now that sums up Waterford today. Under pressure at one end, a rookie fullback, Liam Lawler, didn't commit himself, got the ball out smartly, and up at the other end, Malumphy, with Shane Walsh involved as well, completed an absolutely smashing move. What about that for a catch? And the point you just saw, 121-112. Surely this is a match-winning performance now by Waterford. Is there anything whatever left in Galway? Cyril Donlan cut out again and cut out well. And the fullback now, Liam Lawler, is certainly growing in confidence. Well, the all I think the whole Waterford team growing in confidence now. And Big one down towards Shane Welch, stopped here by Shane Cavada. Linking up with Tony O'Gregan. Well, the centre of that Galway defence was cut open time and again, but the manner in which Galway, which uh, Waterford carved open their chances, they were intelligently used, the passes were astute, they used angles very well, they didn't play into Galway's strong points. It's all very well to play with spirit and strength and commitment, but they played with their head as well. And Malumphy, this time cut out, cutting it out was John Lee. And runs on and Tony Brown. And then we were speculating beforehand, Michael, that we might be seeing Tony Brown maybe for the last time in the championship of this match. I think we're going to see him again. We are indeed. Malumphy, big, huge one down. Shane Welch. Shane Welch again. And this is someday to be a Waterford player, to be a Waterford fan. After the absolute mauling they got in Cork in the Munster final Shane Walsh as he did in the league against Galway has now scored a goal and four and Davy Fitzgerald has been justified here with a good team selection and a good performance and that's gone out for a 65 pressure there on because uh, in smartly was uh, coming the uh, Galway player James Regan let's go down to the sideline now to Joanne Cantwell there's a very strange thing happening down here with regards to the next Waterford sub. They want to bring Shane Casey into the action. They um, made a mistake when they filled out their card and said they want to take Seamus Prendergast off. They do not want to actually take Prendergast off, but because they have the card filled in, they're being told they have to make that substitution. Dear, oh dear, that's interesting. Thanks, Joanne. That's played forward there by Barry Daly, hammered by Donnellan, or rather by uh, Damian Hayes, collected by Tony Brown. Lots and lots of changes, in particular made by Galway, but they still can't quite come up with a combination that is possible, really, daily now. This is a bit better. They need a goal. What a save by Clinton Hennessy! One of the saves of the season. The 34-year-old from St. Declan's in Ardmore justifies his selection. He may have conceded 10 goals in the Munster Championship, but as Daly came through, he was flying through the air and he flicked it around. And just before that, how about this for a save as well? Great defending by Waterford. They're heading for the semi-finals. Tony O'Gregan in the 69th minute with this 65. It's on target, but it's a way too late to make any appreciable difference, 122 to 113. Well, the way it is shaping up right now, it will be Kilkenny versus... Uh, this is some save here. Lovely hit us again. A lovely height, but a super save by Clinton Hennessy. And yeah, it'll be Waterford and Kilkenny Tour and uh, Dublin and Tipperary in the two semi-finals. So Shane Casey comes on, and as you heard Joanne say, <laughs> The paperwork might not have been absolutely precise, but Casey comes in. Big, huge cheer for Seamus Prendergast going off. Played his heart out. Deserves that big cheer. Shane O'Sullivan down into the corner again. And again, it's that tormentor. John Mullan making an angle. They may have been lucky to win two years ago in the quarterfinal. Today, there's absolutely no luck. They've been much the better side. This has been a... Superb performance by Waterford, but a dreadful display by Galway. Tony Brown again. 
down towards John Milan. Richie Foley tried to get there. Comes out instead here as far as Kevin Hines. Now Debian Hayes trying to take the blank scoreline off his own name because he hasn't scored in this match. Aiden Hart. Oh, one back. Aiden Hart from Gort in County Galway. A goal in the 71st minute. So now it's 123 to 213. 26 points to 19. Seven points still the margin. Yeah, Jerry, you hear the crowd now. Tony Brown going off a bit of cramp there at the end of the last few minutes and getting a massive reception from the Waterford crowd. But, you know, Jerry, all credit to Waterford. Great, great comeback from what happened in the Munster final. But really, you know, they, had, they put in a very adequate performance today. But Galway were just so poor, it's hard to believe. Um, you know, they showed no heart, no commitment. And uh, Warford really just, you know, couldn't believe, I'd say, how easy they had it out there. And their confidence grew as the game went on. The likes of Brick Walsh, Kevin Moore and John Milan, all on top of the game. Tony Brown and this man, Shane, Shane O'Sullivan, all, who all had great games. They showed pride today, and they're still showing it deep into injury time. And uh, still, they challenge for it. I suppose and it begs the question too, how good are Tipperary? You know, if, can, you know, if Galway can come along and put on a performance, like, or Waterford can put on a performance like this against Galway, and Tipperary can annihilate Waterford, you know, really their performance maybe was exceptional the last day, and Waterford aren't as bad as that, we know that, but Tipperary was just outstanding on the day. More Waterford subs, and uh, Thomas Ryan is coming on, Tommy Ryan coming on for John Milan. And really, I think, sure, when we assess all the water for great wins they had over the years, the Munster finals, all the one, this maybe will be up there with the best of them for everyone involved because to get a drubbing like that, you know, the embarrassment of it to go home to your county, there was a lot of criticism. Here's a chance, he's just on, he's just scored! Tommy Ryan from Tallow scores a championship goal with 72 minutes gone on the clock, and it's 223 to 213. Yeah, Antonio O'Gregan pulled an awful stroke here. If you watch it, no need for the end of the game at all over. You can't see it in that angle. He came in and took him out of it completely. And I can't believe Colin McAllister has not taken action there. But we see it from another angle. So well done to Tommy Ryan on getting that championship goal. That'll do a power of good. The referee's got a call for the ball. And it is Waterford who come back from that shocking defeat in the Munster final. And Davy Fitzgerald has masterminded a wonderful team performance as they destroyed Galway in this All-Ireland quarter-final here at Semple Stadium.